tip. We're going to be using dumbbells and we're going to be using them in a jogging motion. So I've got two dumbbells here. And what we're going to do is we're going to start jogging. So high knees, lifting that up right up. You're on your toes. The dumbbells start by going front, side, front, side, front, side. Now, I have the dumbbells, most of it's in the water. So it's about three quarters into the um, pool. And I'm going to talk a little bit about speed in a moment. But this is what we start off with. We start off with this part, pretty easy to do. And then I go front, side, front, down. Front, side, front, down. And that's the hard part. Whoop. Turn the dumbbell side on. And you're trying to go back slightly. Push in, push back. And you want to try and push the arms back the same pace you're doing the other motions. Well clearly you're pushing the dumbbells down, it's going to be a lot more challenging. So, where am I referring to as far as the depth of the dumbbell? So in my classes when I teach, I say to them, the only tempo you need to keep in time with is mine. I designed the class in the water with the music I'm going to be using for that. So I basically pre-choreograph and so I know what can be achieved at that tempo. I know. So I want their heart rate to either raise or be challenged physically by the tempo that I've chosen. And that's the important part because I say if you're having trouble picking up, bring your dumbbells closer to the surface because all I want you to do is work at the same speed as me. So for those clients that are stronger, they're able to keep the dumbbell deeper in the water Yep. And actually when you go deeper in the water, that push back is a little easier. Because it's already partially submerged. Or they bring it closer to the surface. So that might be a tip that you'd like to use with your participants to help them appreciate what sort of you know intensity that you want them to work at, but giving them the opportunity to modify it. And they can do that quite easily. So when you're holding onto the dumbbell in this situation, the only time you really get a grip is when you push down. The rest of the motion, even when you've got underneath the water, your fingers can sort of sit out. And so you're basically using the palm of your hand to push down. Really, really important to understand that because a lot of instructors are really preoccupied with gripping, not that there's anything wrong with gripping something or gripping something hard. But if you're using it for an extended period of time, it's another little technique too that you might want to also share. I think that's my phone ringing right now, but that's okay. You're more important. So, remember to get them to jog up on their toes, lift the knees nice and high, okay, while, while you're doing that. So, indicate that when you're on pull deck, and it's front, side, front, down. You really want to make sure they bring the dumbbell all the way back into the body, yep, so they start each movement fresh. And that's this week's active. Demonstrating the jogging movement with the dumbbells is not a difficult one on land. So it is a high knee jog, so you're lifting your knees up high, and then you're demonstrating the arms. So what I often say to my clients is, high knee jog, arms forward, arms out. Then I stop the jogging so I can communicate more on what I want them to do with their arms. Jogging and trying to talk to them at the same time will only really fatigue you so that you don't have enough air to communicate what you want to your class. And they don't need to see it more than a couple of repetitions for them to understand that they're supposed to be moving their legs in that way with these arms. So arms pushing forwards, arms pushing out. Decide on how low you put your dumbbell in the water by the speed that I want you to keep at. So, this is the speed, keep at that speed. If you want to work a bit harder, but can still maintain the speed, push your dumbbell down lower. If you're struggling to keep up, take the dumbbell so some of it is out of the water. The only thing that you need to do is keep in time with me. So that's what I usually communicate to my participants. The other thing I'll also talk about is making sure that the knee lifts up high and you're jogging on your toes. So you want to lift yourself up out of the water and get that nice elastic rebound action from your feet. Then we layer on the extra arm action. So we go jump forwards, side, 
front and push down, front, side, front and push down. So you'll notice that when I say push down, tone of voice changes to emphasize effort. And you do need to do that because that's what they're gonna feel in the pool. It's not like what you're feeling on land, it's what they're feeling in the water that you need to communicate. And you wanna communicate push down so they can keep in time with the suggestion that they keep in time with you. Okay, that didn't make sense, but let me say that again. You want them to keep in time with you so they need to know when to exert their effort, bang, down in the water so they can keep in time with you. But you've got to communicate that as an instructor. So, another hard one to demonstrate, pretty easy to do on land, and that's this week's aqua tip.